<laughs> so I'm sitting here with Colt Cabana, the one and only, and this is another edition of Rockin' Hip Hop, where I interview wrestlers who love hip hop. So how you been, man? You got quite a big shout out this last week. Yeah, that was wild, huh? I mean, uh, yeah. I guess we're talking about hip hop and giant stages. I, sure. yeah, I guess wrestling is a different kind of stage, but uh, our troupe does some hip hop, so it's, it's it, it mingles itself in. And yeah. yeah, Bunker shouted me out, one of the, probably the biggest, uh, one of the biggest promos in the world of professional wrestling. That's kind of cool, you know, I always have that asterisk. Yeah. No matter what happens to me or what, you know, my legacy or lack thereof. Uh, I got that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So, I hear you're a big hip-hop fan. What attracts you towards the culture? Um, so I'll say this, like, I, 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 there's many things I'm passionate about that I yeah. love, and, I, and I'm very passionate about wrestling and comedy. I'm not one of the super uber music dudes. Yeah. But, my music that I like is hip hop, yeah. and uh, that's what I collected as you know as a kid. And that's whenever I find myself in a new town, because I travel all over. That's the radio station that I go to. You know, I find I find the beats. I find hip hop, R and B, and rap. And uh, I I don't know. I grew up in a, in a very white suburban neighborhood, and um, in Chicago called Deerfield. You know, predominantly Jewish, and uh, a lot of preppies and a lot of yuppies and uh, me and I had a core group of friends yeah. and um, we were kind of a little bit the misfits or the outcasts and uh, and that's kind of what we were drawn to I, I feel almost rebellious yeah or I don't want to say thug nature of it all but yeah, yeah a little bit the and, and uh, yeah and that's I don't know I there's something about just the beats and the hooks that just that just gets me into it that I really like what was the first rap CD you bought Oh man, I uh, I have Naughty by Nature. I remember that. Yeah. That was uh, uh, OPP. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I, I believe it was like a single cassette. You know, I also have uh, <laughs> uh, Nina Cherry Buffalo Stance. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, I had that as a single. Buffalo Stance, Nina Cherry, Arrested Development. You know, uh, Tennessee. Old school. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's when I, I mean, I'm yeah. 31 years old now, not that I'm some old man, but not that's what was going on in my mind. 30's the new 20. Yeah, thanks. 30's the new 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but those are some of the real early ones I remember having. Yeah. Um, what do you use these days for your music? Like, are you an iPod man, iPhone, Zoom? So I, I had I had like a big, I had this little shitty MP3 player forever. Yeah. And then eventually I got an iPod. And uh, just recently I got an iPhone, so I'm using my iPhone as yeah. my MP3 player, and that's, uh, but, and I do have an iPad too, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hooked up, but when I listen to music, what I'll do is, uh, I don't really own so much anymore, but I'll throw on Pandora, yeah, yeah, and I'll put on like, uh, usually like R. Kelly or Kanye, yeah. uh, or Common. Usually those are my three, yeah. It's from Chicago. Yeah, of course, Commons of Chicago, and so is Kanye. Yeah. And so is R. Kelly, yeah. It's All three. <laughs> I represent Chicago well. And uh, so th that, those are my stations I'll put on my Pandora for the most part. Are you big into Lupe too? I like Lupe, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and when you talk about Chicago, like I grew up, when my, when, and again, I'm not this diehard uh, you know, music fan. <coughs> Bless you. <Sorry>. Thank you. <laughs> um, but when I grew up, we used to go to uh, buy the mixtapes of the underground guys like Crucial Conflict, Do or Die, Tongue Twister, yeah. who eventually became Twista. And these were before these guys blew up in Chicago. Me and my buddies were listening to them, supporting them. And um, I have a funny story of uh, uh, Do or Die. I went to watch wrestling when I was 17 yeah. at the United Center. And my buddy was like, holy shit, I think that's Do or Die. And they were just walking around as fans. And like, it's a bunch of them, they're all like thugs and whatever, you know, walking around, and then these two, the two whitest as can be guys come up and we're like, are you guys do or die? And they're like, oh yeah. You know, and they're still, I think they were a little embarrassed that the two whitest kids came up to them <laughs> and wanted to take pictures with do or die. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we supported those guys, the Chicago guys, forever. And, just, and so for, to see uh, some of the Chicago love, and there's not that much, but to see like when a Kanye gets big, or, or even Jamie Foxx, and he pulls up a Twista, yeah. And he make you know, there's a lot of Chicago pride Definitely. in the hip hop world for that. Yeah, they stay united a lot. Um, do you have any other stories like that you met as wrestlers, like as a wrestler with interacting with rappers? Uh, man, we were in the. <laughs> 
we were at the uh, the New Yorker doing a show in New York. We had a sold out show. Yeah. And um, across, I don't know what he was doing, but Method Man was there. That's dope. As yeah. Well. And so we dragged him in, and he like you know those guys always are shutting out wrestling. Yeah. You know, and all their stuff. So uh, Method Man was up there, and I got a picture with him, and uh, and he was watching some of the wrestling. But I think he's just trying to get laid to be honest. like you know. There's oh, there's so many fly women just walking yeah. around, and so uh, I think he's just trying to get his dick wet. But he was he he, did, he was watching a little bit of the wrestling. Um, yeah, he's always mentioning wrestling. Yeah, I remember, like Tekal, he's talking about torture rack with Lex Luger. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel him and Ludacris does a lot of references, uh, references with the Bob Backlund stuff and whatnot. Also, I, I wrestled for the Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, who is one of my early, and I don't know if they can. Yeah, I guess they, they consider themselves hip hop. Or, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, when I was young and like, I really, really was into them because they had a lot of wrestling references too, and I really connected with yeah. them. So I'm wrestling now for the Insane Clown Posse, and uh, you know I'm like in their crew, which is bizarre because when I was in high school, like I thought they were amazing, and I and I have stories of I, I used to go to Sam Goody, my buddy worked at Sam Goody, yeah, and you'd give him uh, twenty bucks. Uh, no, you give him five bucks, and he'd give you four uh, CDs. Yeah, that was, his under, yeah, that was his underground thing. So I would go and I would get all the ICP uh, CDs, and that's how I would kind of keep up on it. Talk about like a surreal moment. And now I'm working. They're my buddies. Yeah. yeah, and I'm gathering the Juggalos this year. Uh, MC Hammer's playing. DJ uh, DJ Quick. Uh, Ice Cube. I mean, Mystical. Like. The lineup at the Jag at the uh, gathering of the Juggalos is, if you're a 1990s hip hop fan, like yeah. it blows blows your mind. So that's exciting that you know not only am I getting in for free to watch these guys in a three day festival, yeah. I'm getting paid to watch these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. If you had to make like a list, and I know it's tough to do at times, but yeah, like, top five better like uh, rappers. Oh, uh, again, like I, I know I'm not the. Oh man, I don't. Tough. Yeah, but I, I'm not so much a, a critic or a, you know, and yeah. when that comes, I mean, I, I don't know. Obviously, Tupac's amazing, amazing, yeah. right? Uh, and Biggie. Um, and uh, I, I. What about Kanye? Yeah, I mean, I want to say Kanye, but I don't know if if your fans will like. I don't know. I don't I love. Him. Okay, I think he's amazing, of course. Seriously. Yeah, and I think Common's amazing too. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's just so many to choose from. These are just the guys that I like, and uh, I mean, do I like the Sugar Hill Gang? I don't know. Do I say that? Because yeah. they, I mean, they, right? Is the camera guy saying yes? <laughs> like they were awesome, but I, I don't know if it's if it's cliche or taboo to say these guys, but just guys that I enjoy listening yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. Was there a particular album that like stands out in your mind that you liked the most? Uh, oh man, this is one of my favorite. So, uh, I don't know if this counts, but I loved uh, Body Count. Hmm. Uh, well, you know, and I, it's kind of metal and kind of rap or hip hop, but body, that Body Count album with, with obviously with Cop Killer, uh, but that whole album with Ice T yeah. is fucking, that was like, that was my child. Like, that was one of my favorite. If not still, I'll always put that in, play it in, and I know all the words. Even if I haven't heard it in five years, I know every word to every fucking song. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. just when it hits, you know, like the song hits and it's like all of a sudden you, just, you hear yourself talking or you hear yeah. yourself singing the song just because of like your memory as a child. I love that album. Yeah, you associate it. Yeah, memories. it just comes. It just comes through. I don't. I don't even remember. I couldn't tell you any of the, probably the titles now, but it, as it's playing, I know them all. It like comes right back. Yeah, yeah. Do you listen to like a particular song or anything to get you hyped up before matches or after or on the road? No, no, yeah, I, I can't say I, I do. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I was never one of those guys who listened to music to hide, help my, yeah. help my, to make, let me hide myself up. I use, I, I use music to calm myself down. Yeah. Like to soothe myself. So when I'm kind of amped up and I have too much energy, I use, I love R and B to kind of, to, to bring me down a bit. Yeah, and I know it, it almost seems a little feminine coming from. My, <laughs> a big white guy like me, but uh, I don't know. It's just, there's something about R&B that just really relaxes me. Yeah. And um, if you were a rapper, what would your album be called? Oh man, I well this I, maybe one live Jew. I don't know. <laughs> live Jew. Do you remember two live Jews? Of course. Yeah. So that's a huge album too, especially a kid like me. Yeah. When two live Jews put out that album, and I don't even know like 
the significance of it uh, in terms of like like now as a grown man like I wonder what 30 year olds back then were thinking of that, that. but to a 13 year old kid who's Jewish yeah. that was amazing it was mind blowing so maybe I'd just be one live Jew or two, awesome. live, two live juniors Years, juniors, 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 yeah. juniors. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and I gotta ask you this. Sure. Go on. Okay, I thought you were saying something. No, sure. No, ask but, away. Uh, as a wrestler, who's your favorite wrestler that raps? Like, I know we got the truth. We yeah. got John Cena. MVP just started rapping. Yeah. Raven. Macho Man put out the put yeah. out a record. Well, I I do a I do a weekly podcast. Yeah. Available on iTunes. It's called The Art of Wrestling. Uh, it's available on iTunes or We Love Cold. And I always have Song of the Week. Yeah. And it's always some kind of song that has to do with wrestling. Awesome. Yeah. And so each week I have a song, and usually, like, I had uh, Pile Driver by Coco Beware, and I've yeah. had Macho Man, and uh, and usually it's something kind of to make you chuckle more than to be like, this is amazing. Music. Yeah. But I will say this. this John Cena gets ripped apart a lot by the smart wrestling fan or whatnot. Yeah. But his album, I thought, was fantastic. For real? For real. And hate me or think that I'm an idiot, but they all were well written, they flowed well, the, it was well produced, the beats were nice. I thought, I mean, I didn't have any expectations for that. Yeah, and I, I thought it was not, it was good. Like, the guy knows how to rap. Yeah. Yeah. And I think definitely the dude does know how to rap. Yeah, I but it just I mean almost his like his cat the like, cheesiness almost, you know, like it, it, it the persona. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. allow him to come through. Yeah. Um, and then you gotta you gotta throw one to grab them cakes with junkyard dog. That like second place with junkyard dog and grab them cakes. That song was awesome. I haven't heard that one. Oh Check man, that please. Amazing. Yeah. And uh like to not to change subjects too much, but tell me about Creative Has Nothing For You. I checked out the first two episodes and I really dig it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of potential. Yeah, I do a web series. It's my friend, Marty DeRosa. Yeah. He's a stand-up comedian in Chicago. He's very funny. We do a web series called Creative Has Nothing For You. Uh, you can find it at creativehasnothingforyou.com or on YouTube. And basically, it's one-minute shorts yeah. about, uh, about the wrestler and wrestler-writer relationship. Which is funny in itself that there's people that write for wrestling, <laughs> um, and so uh, it's uh, one minute shorts available every single Monday night. So what I encourage people is while you're watching Monday Night Raw, when there's a commercial, go to creativeisnothingforyou.com. Screw the commercials. Watch the watch the comic short with me and Marty DeRosa. Enjoy yourself, and then go right back to wrestling. And it's going to be on every Monday. Every Monday. New episode. Yep. New episode. Cool. And actually, I was going to mention that you do a lot online. What's the best way for people to stay in touch with you? keep up to date. Yeah, and I mean that goes back to almost, you know, there's a lot of like, yes. well, well, like the do-it-yourself method, and I know my buddy Kid Russell's a rapper, Yeah. and he's, you know, he's on the hustle. I know how it's like, and nowadays, the hustle isn't out of the, ba out of the back of your trunk anymore, or selling DVDs on the streets, like I yeah. see a lot of these guys in Chicago trying to sell me a, it's trying to sell me a CD. Yeah, it's, it's on the internet, it's social media, it's YouTube, it's, it's all these things, so I, myself, I mean, I'm on the hustle just like these guys are, but in the terms of wrestling, I got a YouTube channel, Cole Cabana Wrestling. I got a Twitter, at Cole Cabana. I got a podcast, which is on iTunes, The Art of Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, you know, um, I, I'm all over the place. Uh, WeLoveColt.com is my main website. I sell merchandise at ColtMerch.com. Uh, or just Google me and find out a little bit more about me. There's a lot out there. Uh, Google's a powerful weapon. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I love doing this. I think it's, it's a lot different. Um, than anything I've ever done before, and I, I love talking. Uh, I love talking. You know, something new about hip hop and yeah. music. Yeah, it's really cool. It's cool, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thank cool. You so right much. on. Awesome. Definitely.